Hey guys, it's Erica Apke, America's Miss California 2015, and you're watching Fourth Take. You know, one of the main reasons why I do enjoy the Hunger Games is because they feature a strong leading female actor. Now I personally know of a woman who plays a huge role here in the Long Beach community, Erica Abke. Now she stopped by our studio and shared her story and shed some light on some issues and causes she's passionate about. Take a look. Hey guys, Myra here and I'm joined with a very, very special person. She's Miss Long Beach 2015, America's Miss California 2015. She's an actor, designer, philanthropist, Miss Erica Abke. How are you? Good, thank you, Myra. I wish you could introduce me everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. So you've had a really busy week, right? Or year, for that matter. Every Tell day. us about it. Absolutely. I've been doing over 200 hours of community service with various nonprofits around Southern California mostly based out of animal shelters, women's shelters, homeless shelters. I just want to help uh, the underdog, literally. So. Yeah, for sure. And can you tell us about your journey through competing in pageants this past year? Absolutely. Um, well, I'm a really shy person, naturally, so just competing in a pageant is very exhilarating. Right. But I push myself because I really want to be out in the community as a title holder uh, with a crown and sash on people tend to listen to you more and respect you a little yeah. bit. They give you a little bit of respect automatically. So when I'm competing, I just focus on how I can be a better person, um, how I can improve my life skills, like how to speak on camera and into a microphone. Yeah. Because I'm so shy, those are things that don't come naturally to me. So it really helps You can't me. even tell. Like, you just kind of <laughs> exuberate confidence for well, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. I wanted to touch bases a little bit about kind of the misconceptions about um, pageants. Yeah, there's a what lot. Are, yeah, what are some of those? I think people, I think people first and foremost mentioned the bathing suit competition. They either think that it's irrelevant or they think that it's all about being fit or being the perfect body, having the perfect body, but it's not. It's really all about confidence. Um, the only reason why I was able to win those titles is because when I went out on stage, I exuded confidence and I just smiled as big as I could and even if I was shy, I just tried to own it. Um, so that's really what it's about. It's not about anything shallow. It's actually about being the best person that you can be and being confident in any situation. The so. best version of yourself, right? Yeah. I kind of learned kind of firsthand um, back in Montana, my roommate, she's one of my best friends till this day, Elise Jesse, she competed in um, a pageant out there and I just saw the dedication and the work and she totally, you know, schooled me on what pageants were really about. So exactly. that was awesome to see. It's about bettering yourself and being the best yeah. version that you can be, just like you said. Um, and we get so sidetracked by all the things going on in our life, like school and career, and we stop and we don't really think about, oh, well, how am I actually doing? What are yeah. my skills that I really have? Um, and it really makes a difference when uh, you're in a job interview, if you have had practice. Yeah. You really could nail it. Definitely. So, yeah. so I know with pageants, after you compete, the work is still there's still a lot of work ahead of you, right? That's so just the beginning. That's just the beginning. Can you talk about that process? Well, winning, obviously, is a really big self-esteem booster, but it's also really humbling at the same time because right. you realize you're there to serve. You're not there to be the queen. 
you are there to help other people and be an inspiration for other people. So, and that's the really inspiring part. The, the lives that I personally have touched and that other people have touched, um, even the pageant director of Miss Long Beach, Justin Redd, he's, uh, he holds over 60 events wow. per year in Long Beach that benefit the community and benefit local animal shelters and homeless shelters. That's amazing. And I get to be a part of that. So it's just a beautiful thing all around. And I know you graduated from FITM, right? Yes, awesome. from FITM yes. in LA. So tell us about this um, charitable line that you have. Oh yeah, so I love dresses and pageants actually really got me into formal wear. Um, so I love rhinestones, I love tulle. I went to FITM and I graduated with a degree in fashion design and I wanted to start my own thing after designing for a couple of other brands like Guest Jeans and Scout nice. USA and La Femme. And I wanted to do my own thing and I wanted to donate to local charities and help fund local charities. So that's what I do and that's what I did. And I sketch them out, I send them to my factory in China. They sew and make the samples and Very send cool. them back to me. Very so. cool. So how do um, charities get to, I guess, benefit financially from your line? A portion of each and every sale is donated to actually the charity of the customer's choice. Oh, every wow. year I pick three nonprofits who will receive the funds and the customer gets to choose from those three nonprofits. Oh my gosh, that's so. great. So how does um, the charity get to be, I guess, eligible to be one of those three? Is it kind of picked randomly or? It's hand selected by me. So oh, it's okay. the charities that I know and that I know really make a difference yeah. in the community. Because I really want to support those charities that are really active and really making a difference in people's or animals' lives. Definitely. So those are the ones that I know. But absolutely, if, if anyone wanted to apply or if any nonprofits were interested, I would tell them to go to my website and email me. So what are the uh, nonprofits or charities right that are now today? There's Yes We Serve, which is an international ministry. Um, that helps children in Ghana, Mexico, and even in the United States yeah. who are at risk and are facing poverty. Um, there's also Mental Health America, which is right here in downtown Long Beach. Oh, perfect. And they are uh, the largest homeless um, outreach program in the United States. So they help millions of homeless people find jobs and find homes and become productive citizens. And the last nonprofit for this year is um, Community Action Team which is Justin Redd, my pageant director's nonprofit, where he goes out into Long Beach and he holds over 60 events that benefit the community. That's awesome. Big shout out to Justin because it seems like he does so much for the community. He really does. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm very proud to be his title holder as Miss Long Beach. I did win America's Miss California separately. That's not his pageant. Um, but he uh, did nothing but um, support me in, in going on and winning a bigger title, I guess. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we all have stories, right? And some of us kind of either stay silent or choose to be vocal to, in hopes to help someone, yeah. you know, in their situation. I know you've been really brave about speaking about your experiences with bullying and domestic violence. Can you talk about some Absolutely. of that? Absolutely. Um, well, I grew up with really low self-esteem. I had a speech impediment, actually, so I couldn't pronounce the letter R. So even yeah. introducing myself, people would automatically know that I had a speech impediment. So I got bullied a lot, and I saw that other kids were getting bullied too. So I noticed that I wasn't the only one suffering, and I wanted to make a difference. So I started an after-school club called Students Against Destructive Decisions, where literally we would just sit as a group and have fun and play games, um, just to show that we're not about putting each other down or bullying yeah. each other. And then when I was in college, I met someone who changed my life forever. And um, now I speak and I share my story about being a survivor of domestic violence and how it really affects uh, one in seven women in the U.S. every year, which is a lot. Um, basically, it's someone that you definitely know has been affected. So I volunteer at shelters and I speak and I share my story just to let girls know, or even men who are affected by it and children, right. that it's okay. We all go through some sort of trauma and accept and embrace and get get yourself out of that situation. Right. So. I'm sure it took a while for you to to experience that and then be vocal and to share your story. Oh yeah, right. big time. The first times that I started talking about it, it was actually at local open mic nights and local homeless shelters because I wanted to speak to them about it too. And I cried, of course, a couple times, but um, it, it makes me stronger 
uh, being open about it and yeah. speaking about it. So. so why are you so passionate about helping, you know, other people with being involved with the community? Why are you, why do you make that a priority? I think the world needs more kindness, and I think that I communities <laughs> need more involvement. Um, there isn't enough kindness in the world, so I personally just want to make that my home every day. And for, even if it sounds cheesy. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And for the viewers watching, what do you kind of hope they get out of this? I hope that they go out and volunteer, or I hope that they, in any organization that you want to volunteer with, you can volunteer at schools, animal shelters, um, you can volunteer if you're a graphic designer, you can volunteer your services to a nonprofit, um, just to, as an example. But I also want to encourage women to compete in a pageant at least once in your life. I think it's a beautiful thing and you learn so much about yourself and about other people yeah. that normally you wouldn't have figured that out, honestly. Awesome, Erica. Is there anything else you'd like to add to anything? This was awesome. Thank yeah? you so much. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for stopping by. I know you have such a hectic schedule, but we really appreciate you coming through. Thank you, Myra. And I hope I can get you into an Apke Collection dress soon. Yes, so. I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. And so where can people um, find your designs and all of oh, that? Online um, at my website, abkecollection.com, A-B-K-E collection.com. And it is being sold to local stores. There's a couple stores across California that you'll see listed on the website. And hopefully that'll just grow into more. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, Myra. Thanks. Thanks for watching another episode of Fourth Take. I'm Myra Castaneda. And special thanks to Justine Abigail and Erica Abke for stopping by. You can catch me on Instagram at Myra underscore California and Fourth Take on Instagram as well. And make sure to like us on Facebook. I'll see you next week. Dang, this Prime TV app is amazing. Hey, has anyone seen my crown? Ron, seriously, I can't leave without it. My crown. How fabulous does this look on me, though? Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs>